Well, hello and welcome back to Crucial Conversations. I'm Peter. And I'm Kevin. And Kevin, I'm scared of today's episode. Me too. Yeah. So here's the thing. We've been doing a series of Christol- on Christology, and we're continuing to do that series. And we've kind of moved around and talked about and through the two natures in Christ and kind of how they interact with each other. Oh, boy. I know. I know. See, I'm scared because I know any way that I'm going to even say this is wrong is wrong and problematic. Plus, we now have Latin words that we're going to introduce today. That we don't even know how to pronounce. To, to say, there's, there's to no say way to these, pronounce these correctly. Yeah. And yet we're going to do this because this actually matters. And having somewhat of a grasp on this is, is kind of important for theological purposes. And it, as I, if I'm a regular person sitting in the pew, if I'm an irregular person sitting in the pew, <laughs> whatever it is, this I actually... How many irregular <laughs> person standing just outside of a pew? Well, you're going to get noticed more. Ooh. Just putting that out there. People are going to notice and comment on that. Yeah. But th- th- what we're going to talk about actually makes a difference. It's actually important. And yet, it's so confusing and kind of complicated. And of course, because we're using Latin, it makes it even scarier. So... With that as our introduction, <laughs> and, and you're like playing with chords and moving stuff around. I don't know what's going on. Oh, now we're plugging things in. We are plugging this things. is great radio. Okay. So, but first, uh, before we get started, if you want to uh, support what we're doing here at Crucial Conversations with Crucial Productions, head on over to crucialproductions.org slash give. It's the end of the year. Anything you want to give, we very much appreciate as... If you like what we're doing, if you want to see us do more of it, and by the way, if you didn't notice, on Friday, Habakkuk in 5 was released, so we now have Romans and Habakkuk out there in the wild, and we're working on Matthew and Genesis. Those will be the next two that will be forthcoming here, so you can look forward to that as well. So your support goes to those projects as well. All right, so one of the nice things about today's episode is we actually have a link that we'll share in the show notes on a fantastic article from Dr. Maxwell, who teaches at Concordia Theological Seminary here in St. Louis. Not theological. But it is theological, but it's not it's part of the name. Seminary. Concordia Seminary here in St. Louis, which is a theological institution. That's what I meant. On, it's titled Christology Illustrated. So there's pictures and diagrams which, Kevin, as you well know, you're, you're better teaching when you've got a whiteboard in front of you anyways. It's essential. It's usually behind me, however, because if it's in front of me, people can't see me, which is maybe well, When you're better. writing on it, it's in front of you because you do turn around and face it as you write. I do turn around. Yeah. Face. So at least in this case, if you're listening to this episode in a place where you can actually pull up the article that we'll link there, feel free to do that. If you're driving... Don't. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> this this episode's going to be deep enough as it is. Um, odds are, this will probably end up being a couple parts um, in terms of how many episodes it takes us to cover this subject matter as well. So, Kevin, start us off by what way are we going to choose to pronounce this first word? All right, before we get to words, let's let's use some words. I've used a lot, of words. a lot of words. Now it's your turn to use words. So what we're going to talk about is, re, let's review quickly. Again, when you when you hear Christology, you're thinking really quickly, this is the way the church has agreed to talk about Jesus according to the words of Holy Scripture. Mm-hmm. So when we read scripture, scripture... This is how Scripture talks about Jesus. We want to confess yeah. Jesus exactly how Scripture does. Mm-hmm. We're not going to tell Scripture how to confess Jesus. We're going to read Scripture and go, oh... We're going to confess what we've received from Scripture. So the church kind of got together and said, there are a bunch of people talking about Jesus, and they're saying things that aren't what Scripture says. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make sure we're all saying what Scripture says. And that is Christology. It's saying things about Jesus. Remember, ology is words or thoughts about. Right. And then Christ is Christ. That's referring to Jesus, which... Christ is the Greek word for anointed one, which is the same as the Hebrew word for anointed one, which is Messiah. 
which is how we start off Matthew in five, by the way. Exactly. Ooh, so, teaser. Teaser. <laughs> Tune in shortly. Yes. And so when we're talking about Jesus, we, we're doing so in the way the church has agreed is the proper way to talk about him because that's the way the scriptures confess him. Right. And that's Christology. And so when you think that, the first thing you want to think is that there's one Jesus with two natures. He's fully divine, fully God, and fully human. Okay. So there's one person Mm -hmm. with two natures. Okay. So there's not two Jesuses running around. There's not a human Jesus and a divine Jesus running around. There's one Jesus. And that Jesus has, there's two natures in him. There's the human nature and the divine nature. Right? Right. It's also Easy. not that he's half one and he's half, not half the other. He's not half one and half the other. That's another error. I, I, I heard that one. It was, it was a kid not. saying it, so yeah. it's okay for a kid to misunderstand right. that. Kids but, say, but, oh, <laughs> oh, so what you mean is he's 50, half of Jesus is divine. Half It's like, well, good try, but Yeah, no. it's 50-50, human, right. divine. Yeah. Not quite. And then you say, well, okay, so they're, they're mixed together, and so like he has this weird divine human nature thing. Like, mm, no, that's not quite it either, right? Like so when I mix my cottage this. cheese and applesauce. Cottage cheese and applesauce. Which is delicious, by the way. I'm not feeling well. <laughs> so that's Christology. We've talked about all that many times in this in this little series. Now we are getting to the point of, all right, we got it. There's one person with two natures. How do we talk about those two natures in that one person? Yeah, and my question was, how do they interact with each how other? How do they interact with each other? How do and they I didn't know if that was a heretical question by well, nature. <laughs> okay, good. So, so it's a good question. How do they, how do the natures interact with each other? And also, how do the natures interact with the person? Mm-hmm. And, and then tertiary, why do the natures interact with the person? Oh, I hadn't thought of that question. Yeah. Those okay. are, that's what we're going to cover. Gotcha. So how do the natures interact with the person? How do the natures interact with each other? Why do the natures interact with the person? Mm-hmm. These are the questions. So the what we talk about, theologically speaking, is the three, oh boy, see now you get this This is the weirdness. word, yeah, well, how do we say this word? So, hmm. <laughs> so the Latin word for kind or attributes or whatever like that is gayness or genus or something depending on how you pronounce your genus i learned it as genus right because kingdom phylum class order family genus genus exactly like that yeah exactly like that now the problem is that the plural is genera or genera but if you're english speaking we just put an es on the end and say gayness or genuses <laughs> which is just really confusing so really because there's no latin people walking around that can be offended by the way you mispronounce words or add the wrong plural in the end don't worry about it there are classicists class who will be offended we actually have some that listen to this podcast and too. you know for those poor people we love them we do we love them very much and we appreciate them, and I hope they can correct us in Greek and Latin. Feel free to please comment free on to Twitter comment. with correct pronunciation. And then we can argue about which kind of ecclesiastical Latin you're pronouncing from which time period or other kinds of Latin Ooh, pronunciation. Fun. Yeah, see, there's all kinds of issues. <laughs> and that's the problem is they're asking and this isn't is why, a correct way. And this is there are why, different ways. Yeah, and this is why this gets intimidating yeah. and confusing very quickly right but off the But here's the thing. It don't matter. You can either say gayness or genus or whatever, but this is the classical way that the church has talked about Jesus. So we are going to go through it because these things actually help us not to pronounce Latin words, but to understand how we confess Christ. And the reason we're using Latin words, I mean, let's throw this out there. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong, is because there really aren't other words that express this we don't have necessarily an english word well that does this well i bet there's a german word there's probably a really long german word well what you just said is actually the point is that whether we like it or not christians throughout the world need to talk about jesus and they don't all do it in english Mm -hmm. so one of the classical ways to do this is to go back to the, the way the church formulated this and use greek and latin words because those words kind of get us to the, the crux of the matter, which is... Ooh. Yeah. I That was intentional when we created our name. For those of yes. who are listening, we did that on purpose. Yes. So, 
it don't worry about Latin. You don't have to know the Latin. It's just helpful to know kind of how the church says these things. And that's all you're doing. And sure. that's cool. So one of the fun things is when we say the Gainus Idiomaticum, we are participating with the church over the last 1,700 years. Hmm. Yeah. It's like, oh, cool. They've been saying it this way for 1,700 yeah. years. So we're okay. like going, hey, we're just like them. We, yep. we believe what they believe. No yeah. big deal, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, big deal, but we're not making up new stuff. Sure. So so what we're going to talk about then is there's there's three different genera. Okay. So we're just going to switch back and forth in our pronunciation yeah. however we want. Is so that genera, what we're doing? Gainuses, okay. genera, whatever you want just to say. Just so I know, moving ahead. So there's three of them. And there's they are the idiomaticum, the apotelismaticum, and the myesticum. Yeah, the, that second one, the apotelismaticum, I can yeah. never even remember that one. Don't worry about it. You don't have to. It's all <laughs> written down for you. Dr. Maxwell brilliantly wrote this all down for us because what happens is there are books written on this, 500 pages or longer, brutally hard to read. Martin Chemnitz did some Chemnitz did significant that. work on this. It's a fantastic book, but really hard to read and way more Greek and Latin than you ever want to deal with. Um but this is kind of a summation of all that. Okay. Okay. August That's good because I haven't read that. Who, who, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Francis Pieper, who also who wrote our dogmatic textbooks for our synod that we've used forever, for 100 years. Uh, not quite. Well, yeah, about. Um, <laughs> he also discusses this, but he and Chemnitz, this is just a warning. Warning. Chemnitz and Pieper number them differently. Okay, I saw a question about that. Yeah. And does it matter... Not Which one is one, two, and three? It only matters if you're referring to them by number. If you say the second gainus, then you know which one you're talking about, and you got to uh, say according to Peeper or according to Chemnitz. And and we'll explain why as we go through this. I think that was the nature there of the question. Actually, is a reason. Is, does does it th- does it change things theologically no. if you number them differently? No, it doesn't. Okay. It's simply it's simply the way you group them in your head. And this was actually one way that I learned Christology was when I l- read Chemnitz. After I had read Peeper, and I went, they're different. Why? And that's actually ah. what triggered. I was like, oh, oh, I get it now. <laughs> I see. So sometimes the difference in numbering and the difference in approach actually helps because it helps give a complete idea of why you're grouping things together. It, it's kind of similar to one of the things we try to do a lot here, which is the showing your work, not taking right. shortcuts to just jump to the end, but actually work through how do we get from point A to point B. Right. And what does that look like? And see all the steps without skipping anything. And so what you're talking about here is having them numbered differently actually enables you to see the fullness of what's being confessed altogether. Right, exactly. And as we do that, we're going to introduce another term into all of this as we go forward. We've talked about person and natures. Now, we're going to be specific now. And what we're going to talk about is word and natures. Because yeah. the person of Jesus is the incarnate word, right? From John 1, 14, mm-hmm. the word became flesh. and So kind of the way the church has dealt with this is to say the word in flesh or the word incarnate. Okay. And remember, incarnate is just a fancy word to say in flesh. Mm-hmm. So um, we're going to talk about the person of Jesus as the word. And the reason is because... There is no person of Jesus that exists outside of the incarnate word. Uh, okay, you lost me. Okay, this is important. <laughs> yeah, there I know. That's there isn't like... a person Jesus that exists alongside of the incarnate word that we call Jesus. Okay. Right? There isn't, there isn't a person Jesus that the word kind of took over for a while. Okay, the reason my brain stopped is because when you said incarnate word, I immediately thought Bible. No, yeah. We're I, I thought the wrong thing. Actually, word in flesh. His yeah. name is Jesus. So it's important to confess this. It's important to understand this, that there isn't an existence of Jesus that isn't the word incarnate. There okay. is no separate Jesus out there running around that isn't the incarnate word. Which now, there actually is there are other a, guys a heresy named Jesus. that teaches that, right. that the word was something else. And right. Yeah. Okay. So so also, there isn't a human nature running around there or out there somewhere that isn't attached to the word. And there isn't a divine nature out there that isn't attached to the word. So there isn't 
two natures running around that somehow later get attached to the word and can be separated from the word. No, the incarnation of Jesus is the word with the two natures in it, in the word. Okay. I okay? think I'm following. That's the first stage. So there isn't, there isn't the human nature of Jesus that exists apart from the incarnation. And there isn't a divine nature of Jesus that, are, that exists apart from the incarnation. And they don't just kind of smush them together. No, what we're talking about is these two natures are united in the person of Jesus, the incarnate word. Okay. Okay. The, so this is that's why it's important. Step. And this is why it's important to say the two natures in Christ, not the two natures of Christ. Yeah. Or at least that's one reason. That's one reason to, to get around okay. and get, get through it. Our prepositions matter. Prepositions matter. <laughs> okay. And this is what Dr. Maxwell helps us out with very much um, in the first part of his little essay here. So it's very helpful. He, Great. He actually walks through the word and the two natures. Okay. We're, we're allowed to read from that if it's helpful so, on the so, air. So, yeah, you know. <laughs> hmm. So it, it, let's see, this is what he says. There is no assumed man who acts independently as there is in Nestorian Christology. Because of the incarnation, the word is man. This is indicated, and you'll see by gray shading. Um, in Lutheran Christology, which is the same as Cyril of Alexandria's Christology, okay? That's the way we talk about it. Okay. So we're not Nestorian. We're not having two Jesuses slapped together that we can pull apart. So we have a divine nature and human nature kind of slapped together that we can pull apart. Um, we don't have them existing separate from the incarnation of Jesus. We actually have the Word as a man. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's huge. If your brain is hurting like mine, welcome. That's yeah, that's normal. Then that's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because remember, all of this is predicated. If you go back to it, way long ago when you were doing this, the Athanasian Creed welcomes you into brain pain theology. <laughs> I love that. Right. It's Can like, I title this episode Brain, brain pain, pain Theology? theology. I think you should. I think I should. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Brain Pain Theology is the wonderful confession. I, just the, the amazing, marvelous confession that I don't have a clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is not a conception that I would have come up with. Uh, you know, no human brain thinks this. Yeah, the only reason that we're actually trying to figure this out is because Scripture has confessed it. Yeah. And now we're reading it saying, wait, wait, what is going on? And, How and, does this even work? And so with Isaiah, we fall down at the majesty of the revealed God who says, my thoughts, way higher than your thoughts. <laughs> my, my ways, way higher than your ways. But listen to this. I'm going to send my word. And just like the rain and the snow that fall from the heavens and water the earth and make bread for the eater and seed for the sower, so my word will never return to me void, but will accomplish that for which I sent it forth. And this God who is so far above us that we can't even comprehend him, he reveals who he is to us in his word. Mm -hmm. And that word, his name is Jesus. And that's why this is not scary or frustrating, but fun. Because we get to confess a God who is so ridiculously much beyond, or much, not much, strike, strike much, a God who is so ridiculously beyond our comprehension, yet who loves to reveal to us that he is a God who loves. Mm. I mean, he, he rejoices to say, hey, 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 I am the God who loves you. I am the God who is marked by steadfast love and faithfulness. I am the God who is marked by having mercy. That's who I am. Trust in that. They're like, well, well, aren't you a little upset with sinners? Oh, yes. Oh, I will punish sinners. No doubt there. <laughs> but here's what I want you to know about me. I am the God of steadfast love and faithfulness. Trust in my love. Trust in my faithfulness. We say, well, how do we do that? He goes, my son. Here's my son. Learn everything about him. Trust in him, and when you do that, you will see who I truly am. So with our with our brain pain theology, what we're actually hoping to capture here, and hopefully we can pass it on, you listeners can tell us if we've actually done that as we go through, is there's excitement in further getting to know who Jesus is. Yeah. And that's what we're doing, not because this is a heady academic a theological exercise that, hey, look at how smart we are, we figured this out. No. 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 This is, this is our Savior. This is Christ whom we confess has come to save us from our sin. Let's get to know him a bit more. And, and let's be able to confess him fully and the amazing marvel that it is yeah. that 
our Savior is God in the flesh. And, and the, the, the insanity of that idea. And so, I don't know if you know this, but in the, in the epitome to the formula of Concord, the first thing it addresses with is whether or not original sin in human nature is the exact same thing. <laughs> and guess what the answer is? Nope. Because of Jesus, no. They better not be. <laughs> because Jesus has a human nature and yet is without sin. Mm-hmm. So we now all of a sudden Jesus is driving our theology. It's like, wait, because of the incarnation of Jesus Christ, we have to say certain things that we can't say other things. Mm-hmm. Well, why is that important? Because Jesus is God's saving act for you. And we go, wait a minute. So all of this is actually about a God who loves us and acts to save us. Yeah, that's exactly what this yeah. is all about. And so when you talk about Jesus, we want to make sure we're very careful about natures and person and work and, and attributes and, and all these kind of things. It's because all of this is helping us to confess to believe and to teach mm-hmm. what God has done to save us. I don't know if it it helps the listeners, but I know it definitely helps me to kind of reset my brain in this mindset of this is exciting. It's hard, right. but it's exciting because of who it is that we're getting to know as yeah. we do this. And so hopefully that encourages listeners as they slog through this with us. Well, and the fun thing is, <laughs> is so you go to church on Sunday, your pastor's preaching, you're like, that's the Gainus Idiomaticum. Hey, there it is. Cool. Okay, know, would you know? Just, I understand that. Just now, when you were talking about original sin and Jesus and human nature, and therefore that can't be the essence of human nature, can't right. be sinful. I'm willing to bet that's a Gainus that talks about that. Yeah. Which one? Well, I'm not going to tell you. We're going to walk through it, and at the end, you're going to tell me. Okay. Okay. Because that's kind of the point. Yeah. Is that this is going to help us work through some of these questions of scripture says this, that seems odd. How do we talk about that? How do we work through that? So the first thing we want to talk about is, and we're not going to get through all three of them today. So we should just get that out of the way. (laughs) Actually, let's do an overview and then we'll fill, we'll backfill. Great. Okay. So there are three gainuses. They are in order of, is this, does Maxwell have Peeper's order or Chemnitz's order that he deals with them in? He has Peeper's order. Okay. Which would make sense because but that's the like textbook Kimnitz's they're order. using in the seminary. Yes, but I like Kimnitz's order. Okay. And I'll explain why, but that's okay. <laughs> so here's what I want you to think through. There are three of them. They are the Gainus Idiomaticum, which is not idiot. It's just, it actually, though, is kind of the same root, but we'll get there in a little bit. I bet that has to do with words. Well, yeah. Idiom? Idiom. Idiomaticum? Words. Well, idiom is actually just the Greek word for attribute. Or quality. Oh. Yeah, just a quality of things. I did not know that at all. Yeah, just a quality of things. Okay. That's an idiom. Okay. So it's the Gainus idiomaticum, which okay. is the attribute genus or Gainus. And then you have, in his order, the Gainus myostaticum, which is the majestic genus, because that's what Gainus, because that's what myostaticum I think means. that's the one that's easy to remember. For, for whatever yeah, reason, myostaticum, just like, oh, yeah, there's that one. Yeah, it's majestic. Yeah. And we'll get to there in a second. And then the last one is the Gainus Apotalismaticum. Yeah, I, I, which I, I, is I was what, still going to say Apostolicum. If anybody has a dog and they're looking for a name, here you go. Apot- Ap- Apotalismaticum. Apotalismaticum. Yes. That is one way to remember that if you it, name it, it your dog that. Apotalismaticum. But then you're just going to call so, him Poe So for briefly, short. here's what's happening. So the first Gainus, which everyone has as the first Gainus. Can I just call it the Poe Gainus? No. Idiomaticum. <laughs> no, Idiomaticum I really want to. is... The idea that the attributes of each nature are contributed to the person. So the attributes of the human nature are given to the person, Jesus. Right? So a human gets hungry. Well, guess what? Jesus gets hungry. Okay. Does a divine person get hungry? No. So that attribute of being hungry or being able to be hungry is according to his human nature. So the idiomaticum is the according to Gainus. Well, no, they, they all have according tos. Oh. But the according to in this one assigns the property in the person to the nature from which it comes. So Jesus healing the withered hand. Wait, that's something. Sorry. That's going to be weird. Jesus healing the blind man. Jesus having divine power over death or illness or evil. Yeah, any of those things. That's according to his... Divine will. 
No. Nature. Divine nature. There you go. I'm, I'm having a hard time with words. Will is a whole other issue. Well, we like him, though. He's we our do. friend. He might be a guest. He's, he's a good guy. Will is very good at this, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's fantastic at this. Okay, so genus, genus idiomaticum is about the attributes. We have two natures. They contribute their attributes to the person. So okay. when you see Jesus doing something, we say, oh, he did that according to his... Divine his nature? Divine or nature. His his human nature. Human nature. It doesn't mean that theirs aren't active. The other nature isn't active. It just means that thing that we're seeing there, we see it as according to whatever nature contributes and that to the person. Is it heretical if I say that's the nature that gives them the juice to do that? Yeah, don't do that. That, that seems that's weird. Bad. That's why you're going to use according to and don't okay. substitute other words for it. That's the church's word. So this is actually it. one where you use a different word. You're actually you communicating could, something you else. You can have problems, yes. Okay. Okay. That's so good to remember. According to is the right term. Now, the second one on our sheet here is the genus Maestaticum. And the majestic genus is not about the person. It's about the two natures and how they interact. With each other? With each other. Oh. Now, each okay. other is a little bit strange, though, because this is actually the teaching that the divine nature gives its... What do you want to say? <sighs> Words. Got to be very well, careful. Well, the divine majesty is communicated from his divine nature to his human nature. The divine majesty. That's why it's domestic majestic gainus the divine majesty is communicated from his divine nature to his human nature his human nature does not communicate its attributes to his divine nature this okay i'm going to throw out a random question that seems random to our listeners but you and i have talked about this this is the one that lutherans get accused of making up yes right? Absolutely. In order to justify our view of the Lord's Supper, we get 100%. accused of completely making this up out of thin air. Not thin air. No. Murky air. Very thin. No, yeah, not, murky-ish. Yeah, yeah little, so little we'll get opaque. to that. And, that's, and that's, why, that's one of the reasons that I think creating this third is actually better than the second, and we'll get there. There's another reason, okay. but that's one of the reasons. Because uh, I, I bring so, that up because this is the Lord's Supper, and you this have... Is, the the reformed the infinite cannot contain the finite cannot contain the infinite and the various oh boy. phrases that they have see there's Latin that, uh, words being, for those things you should right. use it's more fun but this is actually our answer so to that and we're why gonna tune in next time yeah. or some other time for this discussion but we will get there um, this one matters because of the Lord's Supper for yes one. and so if you want to think about the the genus monasticum that's the Lord's Supper genus. That's that's kind of the shorthand. Yeah. That's the one that deals with the Lord's Supper and and how Jesus can be physically present in with another bread and wine for freedom of sense on every altar at the same time and be at the right hand of God in heaven. Yeah. How how we can confess the real presence. Yeah. Yep. That's the genus myostaticum. That's now, definitely an Now let's on be clear own. before any tunes out or starts writing mean comments. We did not invent this to defend our doctrine of the real presence which is we what the actually, accusation is we actually confess us. the real presence because of the scriptural teaching of the guy at Gainus Matisoticum. okay okay so we're not inventing our Christology to defend our sacramental theology our sacramental theology is the same confession as our Christology this is drawn from our Christology it's, we, we confess it's the same we, we confess our sacramental theology because of what we confess in our it's Christology. It's the same confession. Let's okay. just leave it at the same. Okay. And I think that's, I think I've shared this before, but this is when See, people I keep ask using me different why. different words and they're yeah, wrong. I'm going to keep forcing this is, you not to. I know. <laughs> when people ask me why I'm a Lutheran, um, and let's just be totally blunt, I've read and listened to and pursued theology from non Lutherans, mm-hmm. non Christians even, right? Sure. I've listened to a lot of it, read a lot of it. And here's the thing. Lutherans are, are just, and I say this as a Lutheran, we're stubborn and we only know one thing. It doesn't matter what the doctrine is. We just keep confessing the same truth. Is Christ crucified for you justification by grace through faith? It just We're just never going to stop. Mm-hmm. And this is why I'm Lutheran. Because when it comes out, well, what's your theology of baptism? We go, well, Christ crucified. And justification by grace through faith. <laughs> grace, faith, Christ. They're like, well, fine. Then what's your theology of how we're saved? Well, justification, Christ, faith, grace. Same thing. What about the end times, Kevin? Justification by grace through faith. Christ. 
crucified for you. Okay, but church? Why do we go to church? Well, you know, it's something about Christ crucified for you, just preaching by grace through church? faith. And, and that's Bible and this study? is this is the yeah. heart of Lutheran theology is come what may, we are going to look at you dead in the face and go, oh, well, that's because of Christ and Fun- God saves funeral us. Funeral sermons? Everything. And this is the brilliance of Lutheran theology. I know. I'm, I'm, st- just I'm trying never... to think of an exception. I yeah. have yet to come up with one. And if you do, we go, well, that's all the offer. We don't know what to say about that. <laughs> because if it's not in line with that confession, we say, well, it's not. that's not a scriptural teaching. We don't know. We don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Well, can you play guitars in the worship service? And we go, well, it doesn't say in scripture one way or the other, but whatever you choose, it should be because of Christ crucified for you. Mm-hmm. And it should teach us creation by grace through faith because of what Christ has done. You say, well, I think we should. And you go, well, if it's not clearly forbidden or commanded in scripture, let's run it through the filter again. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Christ crucified. And this is Lutheran theology. This is good, biblical, sound theology. So that's what we're doing in this. We're simply saying this gayness, which is Christ crucified for you, justification by grace through faith, all that is in this, it does teach the real presence in the Lord's Supper. Mm-hmm. The fact that Scripture teaches us that the divine nature communicates the majesty, the divine majesty to the human nature in Christ. That is what leads us to believe in the same confession in the Lord's Supper. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. We're not saying we really need a, a, a theology of the real presence. Let's make up a Christology. <laughs> if we said that, then forget but, it. Let's go. Uh, and forget the only it. reason I brought that up is because we do get accused yeah, of doing that. all the time. Yeah. That, that is what we're and, accused of. Yeah. And we will address some of this as we go because... Um, there are some very strong accusations out there against us when it comes to Christology. And I think we need to take those seriously yeah. and help people understand why we confess what we confess. Yeah. Cause that's important because it's what the scriptures say and it's about Jesus. Yep. Okay. Now on to third the third one. one, we have a third one. The third one is the Gainus Apatellus Maticum. And what this means is real briefly. And the, the easiest way to, to think this through is that both natures are at work in the person of Jesus to accomplish the goal of salvation. That's it? That's it. Both natures that's are at work. Easy. That's easy. That's easy. I could do it. <laughs> okay. But, <that's, laughs> but see, this is why um, people are treated at last, because this drives us to the goal of salvation. Oh. So when you think of apotelus modicum, you kind of want to think in terms of the, the word apotelus ma actually means a work but it also kind of in, in implies is that the greek telos yeah tell us i know that word tell us is a goal so it's a work that is trying to get to a goal to tell us yes to tell us it is finished which is like one of the only th- phrases greek phrases that a lot of people will know because it shows up at easter and on some some people's arms. Uh, oh, that too. Oddly enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. In John 19, Jesus says to tell us lie, which means it is finished. It's finished. Yeah. So same basic idea with apotelis. That might maticum. actually help me remember this one now. Yeah. Okay. So, so the third gainus in this ordering is that it's both the, it natures. Is finished gainus. I like yes. That. I like so it. So both natures work in the person of Jesus to accomplish the goal of salvation. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That works. So whatever the person of Jesus does. He's doing it with both natures, and it's to accomplish the goal of salvation. So again, the th- first and the third talk about how the natures work within the person. The second gain is in this numbering, talks about who the, how the two natures interact with each other. And then the third one is, okay. Wh- no, the first and the third oh, talk sorry. about how the two natures interact with the person. Gotcha, okay. Or in, in the person. The second one it talks about how the two natures interact with each other. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first and the third talk about the divine and human nature as they interact within the person of Jesus, and the second gainus talk about who the, how the two natures interact within each other. Mm-hmm. So, first gainus, um, the human nature and the divine nature contribute or communicate their attributes to the person of the Word and flesh. His and so Jesus. Jesus acts according to his divine nature or according to his human nature. In the third gainus, those two natures are always active in the person of the word incarnate 
in order to accomplish a work. And that work is always geared towards salvation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. In the second gayness, the divine majesty is communicated from the human nature or from the divine nature to the human nature. But there is no reciprocity. The human nature does not contribute stuff back to Doesn't the divine nature. Okay. Okay. That's the three genera or genera or genuses or genuses. Now, at the beginning, the one question you you said we we're going to talk about that I hadn't even considered is the why. Right. Is is the in this numbering the third is the one that kind of gets us at the why. That's the why. Right. Yeah. Why is all this going on? Why are there two natures in Christ? Why is Christ doing these things? Why do why we? Why does this matter? Yeah. I was why does say. it matter to me? And and the answer is because this is God's work to save sinners. So we had a comment. Like I mentioned this last week um, in our last episode uh, about this individual who had said that, you know, Jesus isn't divine. He was only human. Mm-hmm. One of the things we talked about last time is what we, we can't tell God, here's how you have to do things in order to make it work. As we've fleshed this out in this way, would it be accurate to say, I because of what scripture confesses about the third genera, especially maybe in this particular mm-hmm. case, I can't say that Jesus was only human because if I say that and he doesn't have this divine component, then this two natures, I said component, that's a wrong one, divine nature. <laughs> I caught myself though. Yeah. And I fixed it. That's right. If he doesn't have this divine nature, he's, the salvation isn't working. Do well, you know? Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Like, yeah, because I'm trying so, to get at this this whole he was only human and that's okay. It's like, well, no, he had to be both. No, and that's where I'm going to stop you. you and this is what I did last both. week, and right. I got stuck in a circle. Get, and I'm just like, how do I get out of this? Let's just be clear on this. And I know some people will not agree with me on this, but I, I just think, I encourage you to listen to it all the way and think it all the way through. Yeah. If we start saying Jesus had to be certain things. We're actually on the wrong side of the equation now. Which is kind of what it feels like we're doing with the genera, but we're not. No, we're not. What we're saying is... That's why I'm bringing this up again. And when we get to the (laughs) specific of each genera, we are going to show you in Scripture what drives us to confess these things. Yeah. Okay? So when you say, Jesus, it's not okay for Jesus to just be human. The question is... Does Scripture present him as just human, or does Scripture present him as human and divine? The option B. Therefore, yeah. we we cannot confess him to be just human. Okay. It's not because he has to fulfill certain criteria, and we need a divine nature to do that. No, 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 no. It's simply the the basic truth of Scripture confesses Christ to be Jesus Christ to be. One person with two natures, a divine mm-hmm. nature and a human nature. We are going to confess that too. Any confession that is otherwise is saying scripture is wrong. Yeah. And when we do that, we are saying that God's revelation to us of who he is, is not to be trusted. And that's what we've done as we started off this series, is we've actually taken quite a few passages all over the place, pointing out where scripture talks in these ways. And now, as you said, as we continue in this subset of the series on the three genera, we'll continue to dig down into scripture. So, Kevin, final thoughts on this introductory episode of the sub series of our series on Christology? <laughs> I, th- I think that just to go back and reiterate a couple of things that we've said, enjoy this. I, I have been reading this, this exact theology. I've read this, I can't even tell you how many times, over the last 20 years or so. Sometimes I get it, sometimes it's confusing, and it seems like I'm getting it less. But enjoy it, Mm. because this is seeking to confess Christ as God has revealed Christ to us in his holy word. Mm -hmm. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah. There's no other agenda here, right? (laughs) So this is just the joy of, of humbly confessing with the church of all time, this amazing truth of a God who loves and a God who saves and a God who 
took on the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ and gave up his innocent life for sinners like me, for sinners mm-hmm. like you. And and the result of that is salvation. What what better thing is there to spend our days trying to figure out and trying to wrestle with? Yeah. But see, at the end of the day, this is the coolest thing. You can go home and teach your 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 youngest. Jesus loves me, this I know. And that's the gospel. Mm-hmm. And and all of this is simply trying to confess that. Yeah. And that's the crucial conversation. So if you're joining us, thank you for that. You almost said goodbye, but we, we got to do like little things at the end here real quick. If you have questions for us as we're going through this, as we said, we are simply trying to confess what scripture confesses. If you hear something we say and you're like, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Or I have a question about that. Or what about this verse over here seems to say something else. Send those to us. We would love to talk through it, especially as we're going through the three genera, genera, geniuses. How We're going to be all over the place on our pronunciation. It's going to be fun. We'd love to interact with you guys as you're having engaging in this crucial conversation with us because that's what we hope you do. We've had some questions come in already. We've addressed the at least one of them. Yep. Um, so thank you for that. The email address, questions at crucialproductions.org or go to our website, crucialproductions.org and at the top there's a ask a question link. Just click that, fill out the form, send it in and we'll see that. Subscribe to our podcast if you're hearing this on YouTube. Open up your podcast app if you prefer to engage with us that way. Search for Crucial Productions. You'll get this podcast and Kevin's Sunday Bible study going through John. That's fun. Which is lots of fun. We, we're getting good feedback on that too. Cool. Some, I, this last episode was John 6 and the Lord's mm-hmm. Supper. And mm-hmm. David, who is a regular listener, said, Hey, I'm 15 minutes in and they haven't mentioned the Lord's Supper yet. What's going on? I was like, <laughs> Don't worry, it'll get there. Kevin promised me that it was there. So it's there. <laughs> it's there. Um, so yeah, lot, lots of good stuff going on. Um, and we're on social media. You can find us everywhere there too. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Yep. So, okay. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs>